and welcome to New Life Church Centre. I'm Rachel, one of the leaders here, and it's great to be able to welcome you today to our online service. Just trust that you will enjoy the time that you have uh, worshipping with us and the time that we spent together online. Now we're the church and whether we are gathering in person or whether we're gathering in this way, we are still being the church and doing what we are instructed to do. So we're gonna have a time of worship and then we're going to listen to God's word. The service will last around about 40 minutes. Now before we get into a time of worship, uh, I don't know what kind of week that you've had. You could have had a great week, you've been enjoying the lovely weather we've been blessed with, Maybe you've had a busy week, maybe work has been really stressful. Maybe there's a family situation at the moment that's getting you down. Maybe you're not feeling too well in yourself. Maybe you've got other concerns and worries and stresses. Let's just, I invite you right now, before uh, we, we start this time of worship, let's just pause and let's just focus our minds upon Jesus Christ. Why we have come to gather and worship, let's just lay all our concerns and worries, just put them at the foot of the cross. As we come to this time of worship now, that we take our mind off the things of this world and put our mind and eyes upon our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's just do that, just for a few moments, let's just pause. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you that we can gather and we can worship you. And Lord, wherever we are watching this service from now, Lord, in our very homes, Lord, we commit to honouring you, to worshipping you. And Lord, we just want to give you the glory and the praise that you do truly deserve. We pray that you just, by your Holy Spirit, be present with us where we are right now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together with this first song.
our worship, let's just reflect upon the words that David wrote in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 8 through to verse 12. It says, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength and seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise.
Well, good day everybody and, uh, and welcome and thank you for inviting me into your homes today and to share the word of God with you. But before we do that, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us now as we look into that word. Lord, we just pray that we might have ears open to what you want to say and hearts that are open to receive that which you have for each and every one of us from your word. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, over the last couple of weeks, Pastor and myself have spoken to you on the theme of the risen Christ appearing to his disciples and what was said and what was done there as evidence and proof that he had rose from the dead. I um, just want to go on with that theme just to start us off. It's not our main theme, but just to start us off. And we want to look at what was the instruction that was actually given to the disciples. That instruction that is known as the Great Commission. And we pick up and for our read, first reading, we're going to go to Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, and just from verse 14 through to 18 there. And as I say, this is known as a great commission. It was what the Lord said to do and, and expected from his disciples, an instruction that was given to them and indeed was given to us. It reads like this. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptised will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In the name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up servants, serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Then, if we think about that, they went from a state of being unbelieving and hardness of heart, after the instruction given to them, to the conclusion of this in verse 20, which reads, And they went out and preached everywhere the Lord, working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. And so they had their commission to go and preach the gospel to all people. And it, if we read in Matthew's uh, gospel, the account there it says that they were instructed to make disciples of those that they preached the gospel to and those that received it. And it, it, so it, it went on. Those disciples that they, they made spoke to others and made disciples of them. And so it went on through the ages and through the years till it came down to us and we accepted. And we too are now in that position of having the Great Commission and to go and to share the gospel and share the good news of the salvation that the Lord Jesus brought about for mankind with other people. Now, much as the disciples had great success, we might be saying this morning, well, I don't have that success. It's something I find rather hard to do. Um, I, I, you know, I, I find it hard to share with other people, to talk to other people, and I don't have all the answers to the arguments that they might put forth. So with that thought, it brings me to our main uh, thought for today, which is about um, sharing, but then putting the onus onto other people to accept. And we find this in a psalm, and particularly it's a Psalm 34 and a psalm of David, and the, the psalm here is very much um, an invitation to praise God and the reason why we should praise God. So I just want to read selected verses from uh, this Psalm 34, and it reads like this, 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David goes on to say, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps about all around those who fear him and uh, delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. If we were going to have a text, and we are going to have a text uh, today from this psalm, it is that verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Other verses go on to say, the latter part of verse 10, But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Moving down to verse 15, it reads, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them. As we read through this psalm, you would think it is a psalm of someone that uh, really is in a great position in life. Things are going really well where it says, but I will bless the Lord at all times and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. But it is generally accepted that this psalm was born out of a time in David's life when things were not particularly going well. It goes back to a time which we read about in um, Samuel, um, Samuel chapter uh, 21 and from verse 10 through to 15 where uh, David had been in a position of much success in his life. He'd been successful as a shepherd boy guarding his sheep. He had been successful in, feet, in defeating the giant Goliath and he had been successful uh, as a warrior in coming against the Philistines. So much so that he was greatly admired by the people. We'll just read those few verses where at this time, um, or because of his success, Saul, who was king at that time, became jealous and envious of him and sought to take David's life, so much so that David had to flee and go to an, another place. And it reads like this, Then David arose and fled that day from before Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of him to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slayed his thousands, and David his tens of thousands? Now David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So he changed his behaviour before them, pretended madness in their hands, scratched at the doors of the gate and let his saliva fall down on his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Look, you see this man is insane. Why have you brought him to me? Have I need of a madman that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? And so we see that this psalm was born out of that time when David had to pretend madness to uh, save his life. And you might think, well, what exactly, uh, why would he have this psalm come out of that? If we go on to read in the next chapter, we see that God restored him and 
moved him on in his life to greatness yet again. And, and so we see that then this psalm came out of that. But um, the point being here that it was not a good time in David's life, yet he came to this position where he could write this psalm and instruct others and encourage others. It's an encouraging psalm for people. As it says there, let us exalt his name together. And then goes on to say, in particularly our text verse, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. You might think those are rather strange words, taste and see that the Lord is good. But I guess those of us that are parents and children themselves might have uh, had this ha happen in their lives where you know you can get a child and that, that says oh I don't like that particular item of food or I don't like this or I don't like that and as parents we've said to them well you don't know until you've tried it now taste it uh, and see if you like it and so this is very much something that I said we can use when talking to other people and encouraging other people to become Christians and, and to accept the uh, way of salvation, to try it and see. It's because if they've never tried it, if they never try it in their lives, they will never know. And it is one, something that can be used and always uh, referred back to, to say, try it and see. And I know of many people that have done just that, even in some, with, some with doubt in their minds. But they have said words like, if there is a God, let him make a change in my life. And this has happened. Their lives have been changed because they tried and they tasted and they found that the Lord is good. And it goes on to say, blessed is the man who trusts in him. Now, having said that, the encouragement for us all, wherever we might be today, is to do just that. To taste and see that the Lord is good. You might be in a position in your life where you have tried the Lord, you've tasted the Lord, you have known of his blessings in the good times of your life. And you've been there and... You know, things have gone well and you've been able to do, do like the psalmist said, you've been able to praise the Lord and things have been well uh, in your life. But suddenly there comes a change in your life and it, it is different. And the encouragement today for those that identify with this is to do just that. In times that are bad, in times that are not good, to taste and see accept the lord in the bad times let him bring you through and bring you out of this situation because that is exactly what he wants to do in the bad times of life taste and see that the lord is still good and you can still be blessed if you continue to trust and have faith in him i was reminded uh, of a song um, uh, and the song christian song it's called the god on the mountain and a line of it goes like this the god on the mountain is still the god in the valley it is talking about those times in our life when things are good as being on a mountain up on a high and the valley experience being when we're down when we're down in the valley but the point being is the same God that is with us on the mountain is the same God that is with us in the valley. And another example in a line that it gives there, it goes on to say, the God of the day is the God of the night. The God that was with us when things are light and wonderful in our life is still the same God in the dark times and is with us, doesn't leave us and doesn't forsake us. And the, there's a, a line there that really explains it all to, to us, what is being said. It says, the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. So if you identify with that experience in your life 
uh, of being in a, not a good place, not a good time, as David was on this day. Remember this psalm that God brought him through and out, restored him and put this song within his heart and within his life. So much so that this, this psalm could come out uh, of, of that and we could have such encouraging words that are an encouragement to us and words that we can use in speaking uh, to others. There might be those of you that are listening to this today that have had good times spiritually in your life. You've tasted uh, of God and his goodness. You know that God is good, but things somehow in your life have gone cold. You've become far from God through various things indeed it might even be this Covid epidemic that has come ar around at this uh, particular last couple of years uh, and it might be that that has caused you to turn away from God and not be close to God maybe not being able to go to church has not helped in that in any way and the encouragement to you then today it is the same uh, 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 to to taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste again. Bring him close to yourself. Invite him into your life. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is there. He's ready to forgive. But it is up to each and every one of us that might identify with this situation to invite the Lord into your life. So if you're your position is things uh, that in your life are particularly not good uh, and as we've said it, it is bad times in your life you are invited to taste and see try it again that the lord is good the song you can you can find you can you can if you can play that song it is a song that is encouraging uh, to us and it was an encouragement to me uh, at a time, a time when I needed to hear that God is still God in the bad times. And also, if you're far from him, you're not close to him now, you're, you're cold in your Christian life, taste and see again. Open up your heart and your life. Invite him into your life again and let him show you his goodness and his forgiveness and he will restore you. You might be looking in on this, you might not be, of our church uh, and you're very welcome and thank you for listening to us uh, today and just to say to you, maybe you're in a position where you've considered these things, you've considered the things of God or somebody spoke to you possibly uh, on the things of God uh, and you're considering, you know, shall I, shan't I? Shall I try this? Shan't I? And I, my advice to you is exactly what we have said. Unless you try, unless you taste and see, you'll never know. And in this, there is so much to be gained by trying this, by tasting and seeing how good God is and how he can be a help, how he can change your life. There is so much to be gained, but there is also so much to be lost by ignoring this and ignoring this advice and invitation that I'm giving out but is from the Lord to come to him that he might change your life, forgive your sin, give you a new life with a different outlook and the great and wonderful promise of eternity spent with him and in his presence. You might be looking in on this and never really thought about it, never thought about God, never thought about the need to have him in your life. The invitation is then there to you, as it is to all people. That is what the Great Commission was about, of preaching the gospel to all people, that all men might and women, all the people might know that they have an invitation from God, that they have a salvation to be gained, that is what he died for. It was for the whosoever. And so you are invited today to try and see, to accept it, accept this way of salvation 
change your life and let the Lord come into your life. He will forgive your sin. He will uh, restore you if you're in a position that you are down in your life. He can do so much for you. So if you don't really know or thought, think about, haven't thought much about what we've said, invite you today to think on these things and to seek the Lord. It is done in a simple way, the simple prayer, just inviting the Lord into your life and into your heart. If you want to get in touch with us here, then at the end of what I'm saying, you'll have a, a, a number that you can ring and get in touch with somebody that can help you further in this advice more than I have the time here to do today. But please, again, don't ignore it. It is something that each and every one of us have to make a decision on in our life, to accept or reject this invitation, to say to a taste and see that the Lord is good. So for each and every one of us, whether life is good at the moment for you, in praise and worship to draw close to him, to taste him again in a greater way, to learn more of him, to draw nearer to him, and that we all might see the goodness and experience the goodness of the Lord in our life. I have a couple of uh, scriptures for you as we come to the end then uh, of what we want to say. And the first one is from Psalm 119 and verse 103. And it says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet then are the words and the promises that are in God's word. Promise to be with us, to forgive us, to restore us as he did with David. Promise never to leave us, always to be there in our life. Promise of forgiveness of sin. Promise of an eternity spent with him, of eternal life. The promises are many in his word. And so encourage you to look into his word, to those promises that can be sweeter than honey to your taste and to your mouth and that you can accept to yourself. Final scripture then from 1 Peter 2 and verse 23 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you might grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And often this scripture is thought for people that are perhaps young Christians, only just coming to it, talking about newborn babes. But, you know, I believe this is for everybody. As newborn babes need to be nourished, so we also, all of us, need to be nourished with the Word of God. It is described there as pure milk of the Word that you may grow. Each one of us, no matter how long we have been a Christian or how long we have known these things that we have talked about, we need to grow. We're still growing closer to him and growing in the knowledge of him and the knowledge of his word and again it says there if indeed you have tasted that the lord is gracious the lord is gracious and forgiving and is all that we need in our lives and so we can indeed come back to our text as we come to conclusion with this each and every one of us, to embrace the Word of God, embrace the Holy Spirit. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who trust in Him. Let us very much trust in Him. Let our faith grow in Him, in good times, in bad times, that we might know of His presence by opening up to him, we might know his presence in our life and that we might taste and see, we might try that the Lord is good. And from experience, I will say that the Lord does not let you down. Taste and see then that the Lord is good. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
for this time that we've had in your scriptures. We, Lord, we thank you for the encouragement we have. We thank you for its leading and guiding. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is with each and every one of us in our own homes or wherever we might be. Lord, if we've identified with this, and surely all of us in some way can identify with these scriptures today, Lord, we pray that we'll just take these to ourselves. We will seek you, we will find you, Lord, and Lord, we might taste of your goodness in our life, wherever that might be. So, Lord, for all this, we thank you, we praise you. Amen. God bless you. Well, we thank Ken for sharing the Word of God with us today. And thank God for the Word of God that brings great encouragement, challenge, yes, perhaps to our life as well. But that great old scripture, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who trust in Him. And praise God. You know, we all know what it is to taste something. And yes, we like the taste of that, so you want some more. And when we taste of what the Lord is and His goodness and His grace and His mercy to you, to us we want more of him and praise God let's be that kind of person that draws closer to him that he might draw closer to us that we might taste and see that the Lord is good God bless you have a great week serve the Lord as I often say with all of your heart let us pray Father we thank you for the word of God it's, the scripture says so clearly the entrance of your word bringeth or gives light and lord as we allow it to enter our lives and we allow it to as it were take it on board it brings light and illumination to our life and our understanding and our living so lord just have your way in all of our hearts and lives and everyone that is listening online uh, to this service this morning lord cause each and every one to draw closer to you to taste and see that you truly are good and that might know uh, of your glorious benefits in knowing you as lord and savior so bless each one, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.